Hello. I'd like to say a few words tonight about my Celestron C6. Uh, it's a Schmidt Cassegrain uh, optical tube. It does not come with this uh, carrying strap. I added that. It does come with a uh, direct vision view, uh, finder scope, which is around here somewhere, but I don't use them, so it's not installed. This can be used in several ways. First, let me tell you about Schmidt Cassegrain. The fellow named Laurent Cassegrain used to have one of these, like this big blue Newtonian uh, reflector behind me. It was kind of big and kind of awkward to carry around, kind of heavy. He thought, hmm, I bet I could figure out a way to make the same telescope shorter and lighter. This weighs 12.4 pounds without a finder scope or uh, eyepieces or anything. This weighs 6.1 pounds, less than half that. This is uh, twice as long as this one. So this is half as long and less than half as uh, heavy with the same aperture, same diameter of the uh, uh, objective, 100, 150 millimeters, about six inches. It is different from a, a Newtonian reflector, however. With the Newtonian, the light comes in, goes to the back, hits the mirror, goes up back to the front, ricochets off a flat mirror out the side. With this, the light comes in and goes through this thing, a corrector plate. It goes back, hits the back, comes back up, hits the secondary mirror, but in this, in this the secondary mirror is not flat. It's uh, convex, and it multiplies the focal length by five. And then it goes all the way back down to the uh, objective mirror where they drill the hole, and it comes out the back. That gives this a focal length of 1,500 millimeters, as opposed to 750 for that one. Uh, twice the focal length. Now, the magnification you get when you're looking through your eyepiece is the, uh, the focal length of the telescope, the optical tube, divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. So with a 10 millimeter eyepiece, this will get you 75 magnification, 750 divided by 10. This gives you 150 magnification, 1500 divided by 10. So this gives you twice the magnification while collecting the same amount of light. Makes this really good for looking at uh, uh, the moon and planets. However, as your magnification increases, because your focal length is increasing, your field of view decreases. So although this has twice the magnification of this, it only has half the field of view. Now if you're looking at Jupiter, you don't need a big giant field of view. It doesn't take up that much of the sky. If you're looking at uh, uh, Andromeda Galaxy, Mesa 31, or uh, NGC 7000, North American Nebula, you need a lot of area because those are really big. To get a lot of area, you need a short focal length. So this is better for looking at deep sky objects. This is better for looking at planets and the moon. Yeah. Uh, this, I like this. I can carry it in one hand. There, I'm carrying it in one hand. Uh, it's light. Uh, I can put it on a light mount. You have to have a media mount for the Newtonian because the light mount's just not strong enough to carry the weight. You want to use this for looking at things optically. You take this off and screw this on. And it's a, a, an adapter which goes into a uh, diagonal up into your eyepiece. You want to use it for taking photographs. You put this on. Uh, right now, I've got a reducer on it. You screw that in. You put the camera on back here, just a filter wheel. And uh, you have to have the correct amount of uh, uh, distance between the reducer and the camera if you're going to take pictures. Uh, there's a third way of doing this, and that's to use the hybrid saw, this thing right here. 
to do that, you take the retaining clip off, pull the secondary mirror out, and put it in the safe here to keep it safe, and then screw the hyperstar in and put the camera on the hyperstar. If you're using a hyperstar, you can't use an eyepiece because the light never gets back here to come out the rear. You can see things, however, because if you take the uh, camera, which is screwed on here, and plug it into a laptop, whatever the camera sees, your laptop sees. If you do that, by the way, uh, if you run a, a camera into a, uh, put the camera on here if you want, if you move, run a camera into a, a laptop or a PC, that's called electronic assisted astronomy. That was invented uh, for visual use if you had like five or six people want to look at something, or a class of 25 students. So everybody's going up, re, refocusing and spinning there, woo, 30 seconds at the eyepiece, the whole class would see it right there. These options make this a very, very versatile optical tube. I can shoot this at F10 uh, to look at planets, uh, or I can shoot it at F6.3 with this field reducer uh, to look at deep space objects, or I can shoot it at F2 with the hyperstar on it. The the the, uh, if you want to calculate comparative uh, exposure required, you square the F value, the focal ratio, and divide the lesser by the greater. In this case, this is a 750 millimeter focal length, 150 millimeter aperture, you use an F5, because uh, 150 goes into 755 times. With the hyperstar on, this is an F2 because you don't have the secondary mirror multiplying the focal length by 5. So it's just F2, 200 millimeters. Um, or actually, 300 millimeters. F2, 150, 150. F2 squared is 4. Uh, 5 squared is 25. Four, uh, 4 goes into 25 six and a half times. So it, this takes six and a half hours to take a photograph. This can take the same photograph in one hour. In fact, I have a couple photographs here I can show you. One is where I used my um, SV Boney 503 80ED refractor for 30 minutes. And the other one here is where I used this Hyperstar for 30 minutes. It's the same game, the same volume, the same. 15 seconds worth of exposure, the same total 30 minutes worth of exposure. As you can see, the, the I'll have to tell you which is which, because the really, really bright one is the hyperstar. The really, really dim one is the uh, ED refractor, which was designed for astrophotography, but it's it, it doesn't, it's got a uh, 5.6 F5.6 field ratio, so it's running about a 39 or thereabouts. So it's a uh, 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 bigger than nine. 5.6 squared. It's about a 29, I guess. So this is about 10 times faster with the hyperstar. Now with uh, just the field reducer, it's a little slower. And if you're not using field reducer at all, it's a lot slower. Yeah. I like this scope a lot. I bought it at $879, plus $500 for the Hyperstar, $150 for the specialized um, uh, filter drawer, uh, another $200 for the field reducer, another $100 for the spacers and stuff, another $50 for that filter drawer. It, it costs a lot of money, but it replaces a lot of scopes. I can use it for taking uh, pictures of planets and the moon, I, like I would with this thing here, my uh, Mac. I can use it for looking at uh, deep sky objects, uh, like I would with the Newtonian. 
uh, and taking good pictures of them, or slap the hyperstar on here, and I have something that's kind of like 150 millimeter red cap 51, uh, except they don't make it, they don't make such a thing. You have an, uh, this, it just becomes a light bucket with the hyperstar. You can immediately see a whole lot of stuff. You can do anything with it. Oh, and I got the six uh, inch version instead of the eight, the nine and a quarter, the uh, uh, eleven, or the fourteen inch Schmidt cast grains, which can use Hyperstar because the price of those goes up very, very quickly. This is about, uh, uh, well, I have two cameras I use. I use this camera for big things and this camera for small things. With these two cameras and this setup I have here on the table, I can photograph just about anything in the sky uh, quickly and efficiently. So, if you if you're looking for a about a four thousand dollar with the camera, about a four thousand dollar rig, uh, sounds like a lot of money. But I spent a lot of money. When you get this, plus I'm using the CG4 mount behind me with a two hundred and sixty dollar Astro gadget go-to conversion kit. It was the cheapest way to get a medium uh, go-to mount. Uh, in fact, this actually cost less than my light uh, uh, Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI mount. If you have this optical tube, you can do anything. Big, small, faint, bright, doesn't matter. This will do it. And you'll you'll pay for it, but it'll do it. Disadvantages, well, there are a couple. For one thing, uh, these are hard to collimate. The, re the return, the, uh, the secondary mirror in here, is not flat, it's convex. And with a flat mirror, I, I can I can collimate my Newtonian in a couple minutes or less. <laughs> With this thing, uh, I can't use the recommended method of a star in the sky, and then you're turning the screws here on the front to adjust the front mirror, because I get kind of dizzy and disoriented in the dark, standing up for long periods, so I sit down. So I put a, I put a, a artificial star on a with a flashlight, a piece of aluminum foil, up and I, oh, and I put that up back here, and I go all the way to the other side of the front room, all the way to the other side of the kitchen, and uh, put my mount. Uh, what's this mount am I using? I'm using this mount that I got off my uh, uh, Skywatcher AZ GTI. I put this scope on that, this optical tube on that mount, put a camera in it, focus it. And then unfocus it so I've got an Aries, I got a big white circle. And I sit there and really, really carefully adjust these things because, unlike a Newtonian, these have to be absolutely exactly correct. Since it's convex, you're really in bad shape if anything is off just a little bit. It takes an hour or so to get it perfect. But once I got it perfect, I have to put this thing in. Uh, a tri batnaw mask. And when I put the tri batnaw mask in it, I find there's lots of errors. It's not perfect, it's just perfect for the eyeball. Then I keep adjusting it with the, for another hour with the tri batnaw mask. And then I get it, oh, it looks like pretty perfect. I take it out, and the stars still don't look as good as they do to a Newtonian or a refractor. But they look acceptable, they look pretty good, they don't look too bad. I'll, show, I'll put a couple pictures I took with this. If you're at the end, you can see they kind of look okay. If you do astrophotography or EAA like I do, you're going to end up a pixel people. you be looking for misshapen stars around the edge and things like that. Um, so getting good, they don't call it collimation here, they call it uh, alignment. Getting good hyperstar alignment is difficult. Uh, getting good Collimation, if you don't have the hyperstar in, is difficult. And once you've got the thing aligned, you've got a little small, see when the, 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 uh, 
the hyperstar and the basic focusing tube are small, like 28 millimeters. And most of my uh, that's two inches. Most of my other things are 50 millimeters big. When we got a little small tube for the light to go through, the light that gets through there, when it hits the cameras, when it hits the sensor, illuminate the entire sensor. That gives you something called vignetting. And vignetting is a serious problem with a, a Schmidt Cassie lens. Even worse with a hyperstar. So that's magnifying the uh, vignetting. And I'll take three or four. I'll, I'll take three or four sets of flat sometimes before I finally get one that the, the telescope says, oh, okay, I can use that. I do that every night. So vignetting is a, an issue, and collimation or uh, hyperstar alignment is an issue. Using a, a refractor, an EV refractor, is immensely easier. Oh, don't buy this if you've never owned a telescope. Buy this one, this thing back here, the SV520. It's a good beginner scope. Buy this if you have a lot of money you don't need, uh, or you're willing to spend a lot of money you don't have, like I did. And you've got some experience behind you in working with Newtonian, and you're adventurous, and you're very patient, and you can get good results. And anything else about this thing? No, that's my uh, my thoughts on the Celestron B6-A XLT uh, Schmidt Cassegrain. I'll, I'll put a couple pictures here at the end so you can see what kind of photograph. These were all taken with the hyperstar. And um, until I see you again, happy trails.